my name is Natalie. I'm a teacher with more than a decade's experience in teaching. Now, if you ask me 10 years ago, I would say that I absolutely support free education for all. But over the years, I changed my mind because reality has proven otherwise. Today was actually the last day I volunteer at a girl's home because I finally had to admit to myself that it was uh, my action, that means me volunteering, it was actually based on a false premise. So my action actually does not um, lead to the outcome that I wanted. I, um, I thought that by helping the girls to improve their studies will um, lead to better employment after they leave school. But it was a far cry from breaking free from the impoverished mindset. So that kind of uh, was the was the trigger that prompted me to to look at the bigger picture and come up with a cure. I'm not saying that this is the best solution, but hear me out. Right. So let me put things into perspective by giving you an example. If you pay for a toaster that you want and it comes with a free gift. Now, the toaster turns up turns out to be a good one. Will the free gift um, affect your decision to go back to the shop the next time? Not likely, right? Okay, the, the free gift is not uh, is not the main issue here. We care for the things that we paid for, which is the toaster, right? Second scenario, the toaster was bad. Will the free gift be able to influence or convince you to go back and give the same shop a second chance? Not likely as well, right? So what does it mean? What does it tell us? It tells us that we as human care for the things that we want and we have paid for. So to put this into the context, parents paid for private tutors and also uh, tuition centers so that the children can learn better from them, from these third parties, <clears throat> which far by far outweighs the outweigh the education that the government has provided for free. So it's only fair if we privatize our Sekolah Kebangsaan and charge a fee monthly on every student to balance things out. So what are the possible um, implications of privatizing Sekolah Kebangsaan? Well, first of all, it's better wages for the teachers and then we promote teaching as a possible option career for the future generations and also for the fresh grads and thirdly we eliminate those who are uh, not eager in learning from school because we are all cut differently okay some of us are better with crowds you know the seven aptitudes of children that's a, the test okay so when we have successfully eliminated those who are less eager to learn then we can finally um, provide a more conducive learning environment for both teachers and students um, i know that some of you might be asking then what about those who are in uh, lower income brackets okay for me i think it's a matter of nak sri budaya tak nak sri budale, as the saying goes. If you want it bad enough, you find a way. And moreover, for the less fortunate, uh, our government has lots of programs, funds, and aids that they can apply for, which I think shouldn't be a shouldn't be a big problem for most, uh, for for those who are in need. Yeah, so. That's my two cents for the day. I hope that this will create an awareness, gain some traction, and the diffusion of this idea will someday, hopefully not so long into the future, 
uh, reaches the ears of the policy makers uh, in the cabinet that has just formed. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much. See ya.